Many teenagers are as concerned as their parents with the public's conception of today's youth. Leather jackets go with motorcycles like butter on toast, and this perfect pairing is approaching 100 years of bliss. There aren't many other garments that parallel the staying power of the leather jacket, both on and off the bike. While nowadays leather jackets have become a staple of wardrobes across the globe, in their early days they served as a symbol of nonconformity and the tough countercultures of riders and rock and rollers. But before we delve into that history, we're going to go back to the ancient craft of leatherworking. Leather is created by tanning animal skins, which is a preservation process that treats them into a highly supple, strong, and water-resistant material. Many different mammals have been used for their hides, but the most common are buckskin, lambskin, sheepskin, and cowhide. Up until the 1960s, horsehide was actually the leather of choice for motorcycle jackets, before steerhide and ultimately naked cowhide emerged as the industry standard. Our contemporary idea of the traditional biker jacket is indebted to the World War I military flight jacket, also known as the bomber jacket. A rubber raincoat company started by two brothers made some crucial adjustments to this style of leather jacket that transitioned it from workwear to everyday. Now, leather jackets began making their way into the cultural consciousness. The history of the leather biker dates back to 1928 in New York City. Designer and clothing manufacturer Irving Schott, who was particularly fascinated by riding culture, created the first ever distinct motorcycle jacket. He named it the Perfecto, after his favorite cigar. Schott can also be credited with creating the military bomber jacket and being the first to use zippers as jacket closures. Another military inspiration can be seen in the epaulets at the shoulders of their moto jacket, some of which feature a single star. The original run of these jackets were sold at Harley-Davidson stores for about $5.50, about $75 when adjusted for inflation. And as it gained notoriety, this price significantly increased. The Perfecto riding jacket was as practical as it was iconic, featuring an asymmetrical design with an angled metal zipper that allowed the jacket to fasten securely without digging into the rider. This integration of a zipper was groundbreaking at the time, as all other jackets had historically secured with buttons, hooks, or toggles. Zippers are obviously an incredibly useful invention, but they were historically expensive to manufacture as each individual tooth had to be polished. However, the US government saw the value of zippers during World War II and they put in an order for 250,000 units. As the saying goes, necessity breeds innovation, so better mass production methods were developed to meet this need. Zippers became more economical than ever and now had tons of functional appeal for civilian clothing. The pattern and construction of the Perfecto was also executed with three other features making it perfect for riders. The Lancer front, which is an overlapping double-breasted design, helped insulate the jacket and reduce wind chill. Secondly, the cut included fullness through the shoulders in the form of gussets to allow a comfortable reach to the handlebars. Lastly, Schott tailored the bottom of the jacket to waist length, suiting it for a seated position in the saddle. And it's worth noting that riding gets a bit windy, so the collar and the lapel snap down. Nothing influences on a mass scale quite like media, and a Hollywood cameo did just that for Schott's moto jacket. In 1954, Marlon Brando wore the Perfecto in the cult classic motorcycle film The Wild One, cementing its association with rebellion and skyrocketing its popularity. The leather jacket was subsequently banned in many U.S. schools because of its hoodlum connotations and its evolving anti-establishment hypermasculine symbolism. Open shirt, black jacket, dungarees are mentioned in the code as not proper school attire. Throughout the mid-century, more and more notoriously misbehaving bad boys like James Dean, Elvis Presley, Steve McQueen, and others sported them publicly and increased their allure. Keep your hands off me. Those teachers are going to have a rough time with that one. Following World War II, there was a huge surplus supply of aviation leather jackets that got sent into the thrift system in the USA. Many veterans wore their jackets after service as well. With this different sense of accessibility for the young and often disenfranchised, it's no wonder they became a staple of counterculture and a protest to respectability. Biker jackets became a confrontational, working-class apparel choice that grew intimately linked to the music scenes of the United States and Great Britain. 
In the 1970s, early British punks made the leather biker their uniform, embellishing them with safety pins, studs, and paint. The style stood in stark contrast to the more conservative fashion norms of the contemporary mainstream. With infamously chaotic Sid Vicious of the Sex Pistols and other musicians rarely seen without one, leather jackets were being adopted by a broader and broader subculture of people. The 1980s were fortunate enough to see even more outrageous and experimental leather jacket customizations. From the Ramones to Madonna, sporting a leather jacket was a natural choice for rock stars and pop stars alike to achieve a look of effortless cool and aspirational inaccessibility. Other noteworthy subcultures or countercultural organizations to adopt different styles of leather jackets include the Black Panthers, urban LGBTQ communities, skinheads, and more. On a parallel timeline to the classic tropes of leather jackets, some upscale innovation was taking place in high fashion spheres. This forks our history into many different innovative styles, but we'll focus on an unexpected role that French designer Yves Saint Laurent played in elevating the leather jacket for the wealthy and fashionable. At just 24 years old, and in the position of head designer at Dior, Yves Saint Laurent presented a beatnik-inspired runway collection featuring a crocodile-embossed leather jacket. It was ultimately poorly received at the time from critics and the Dior consumer demographic, but in retrospect stands as an unabashed inspiration drawn from youth culture at the time. They're wonderful people, the teenagers. The influence of what was considered high fashion could now be referenced from young people rather than purely the art direction of fashion houses. Well, I am very materialistic and I think that it's a very materialistic world. Ironically enough, Yves Saint Laurent was let go from Dior and drafted into military service following the failure of this collection and the leather jacket in it. However, his design legacy did not end there, as many of us know. Fast forward to today, and the once controversial and edgy leather jacket is significantly more mainstream. But the leather moto still has held on to its reputation of being badass. And the coolest thing you could have when I was 13 was a leather jacket. There are now countless retailers, styles, and even different materials that the motorcycle jacket is available in, but all of these owe their original inspiration to the iconic Shot Perfecto. Thank you so much for watching! This one was seriously a doozy. My name is Megan Stark, I make primarily motorcycle related content and run my own gear company called Great Lake Supply Co. You can go ahead and check out my website. But if you're curious to peruse a curated list that I've made of my favorite leather jackets, go ahead and check out the description for links. There are honestly so many different styles of leather motorcycle jackets that I didn't even get to cover. I wanted to kind of focus more in on that traditional biker jacket. Um, there are some more cafe racer jackets out there, some more cowboy inspired, but it would take an entire series to cover all of these deviations. That could be something interesting to pursue. But for now, I want to say thank you once more. Please give the channel a subscribe and like this video if you enjoy what you saw. And until next time, ride safe. <laughs>